Good morning. It is a joy and privilege to welcome you to worship on this Epiphany Sunday, the first Sunday of the new year. We come together as congregations from First United Methodist, St. Luke United Methodist in Lydia's Place of Asheboro, North Carolina. And wherever you're joining us from, we welcome you this morning. We ask you now to center your hearts, your thoughts, your prayers on the living God as we worship together.
Good morning, First Kids. So today I have a couple of questions. Does anyone know what this is? It's a map, that's right. And what do we use a map for? Hmm. Well, if we're wanting to go somewhere, we use it to follow directions. And when we're on our journey, we check our map to make sure we're going the right way. So what do you think this is? It's a star, that's right. Do you think this star can do what this map does? Hmm. After Jesus was born, the wise men saw a star in the sky and they believed it announced the birth of a king. When King Herod told them to go to Bethlehem to find Jesus, they did not have a map to guide them. They had a star. They followed it and it led them right to Jesus. We are all still searching for Jesus today, don't you think? We're trying to find him in our hearts. And today we don't have a map or a star to go by. So what do we use to find Jesus? We use our Bibles. Our Bibles can always lead us in the right direction. So whenever you're in doubt and you need direction, you can look to God's word. Okay, let's pray. Thank you, God, for this day. I am your child. Show me the way. Amen. See you guys soon. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us now join together as we affirm our faith. The words will come up on the screen. We believe in the living God, the God of all people, who creates life and sustains the universe by his power and love. We believe in Jesus the Christ, the man of Nazareth, Revealer of God and model of all humanity, the greatest gift of love and the guide for all our living. We believe in the Spirit of God, a spirit that inspires us to creative living and empowers us to be persons of hospitality, compassion, joyfulness, and love. Amen. As we continue in worship and we join our hearts in prayer, I want to start today by asking us to join together with the words of the Wesley Covenant Prayer that is on your screen. This is a prayer that was prayed by John Wesley and the early Methodist as a way of yielding their lives to Christ and to invite Christ to use them however Christ wanted to. And so may we to offer our hearts and do the same today. Let us pray. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt, to rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee and brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
Thou art mine and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Almighty God, we are so grateful for your great light. We are grateful that you have sent your child into the world in order to give us a new life in a new way. Open our hearts, O oh God, and help us to know your presence and your being this day. Help us to hear you and to seek you with all that we are. O oh, gracious God, Lord of light, shine your light upon us. Almighty God, we are grateful that you come to us and you help us when we're in good times and in bad. We're grateful for your presence this day and every day. We, we thank you that you have the whole world in your hands. And we ask, Lord, that you use us in whatever ways that you can, that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you will use us to bring your light and your love to others. O oh, gracious God, Lord of light, show us your love. Lord, we are grateful for all the ways that you heal, and we lift up all those that are going without today, those that have been affected by this virus, those that are sick and in hospitals, and for those that are caring for them. We lift up their families, and we lift up the families of those who have lost loved ones. And we ask for your great love and your light to shine upon each and every one. Gracious God, Lord of light, shine your love upon us. Lord, we give you this new year. And we ask that this new year is a year that we glorify you in all things. That in the good and the bad that we sing and praise your holy name. Shine your light upon us, gracious God, Lord of light. Shine your love upon us so that we may show love in the world. For we pray all these things and we give you all the honor and glory. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As the Magi came and brought their gifts, knelt and worshiped the Christ child, let us too now worship God with God's tithes and our offerings. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son.
Our scripture today comes from Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. Now let us open our hearts to hear God's word. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they set left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. On this Epiphany Sunday, God is revealing so much more to us. This year, time last year, we were uh, making our New Year's resolutions. We were hoping that 2020 would be our year, that we would have all that we wanted and making a new start. Then in March, it became obvious that 2020 would be like no other year that we have ever experienced, at least not in uh, the way that we expected and certainly not in the best kind of way. I've heard several people say that they are so done with 2020 and they just want to leave it behind and are so excited for 2021 to roll on in. Now that we are in 2021, let's though stop this morning and let's allow God to show us and let us discern what God is teaching us and what God might have been trying to teach us this whole past year. It has been a difficult year, and always during times of trial and trouble, there's some kind of lesson, there's something for God to show us in the good times and in the bad. And so let us today think and stop and wonder what God is trying to reveal to us on this Epiphany Sunday. As we talked in the Agape Sunday School class last week, uh, it is so tempting to fly by 2020, but we cannot short shortchange 2020 and just be done with it. <laughs> Instead, there are lessons to be learned. And God is at work if we will just open our hearts and open our ears to hear that God will show us. We cannot just rush and be done with all of this uh, because certainly the pandemic is not over. But we cannot just be done with 2020 and may we never ever forget all the lives that have been claimed and the more deaths to come due to this pandemic. May we always remember them and their families and all the lives that have been changed by this devastating pandemic. Maybe 2020 has been a difficult year of loss because we've lost someone that we love to COVID or to some other uh, means and we're grieving. And it's been hard because in these unusual conditions, the ways that we normally help and support one another, being able to visit with each other, to hold each other's hands, to pray with one another, all those things have been done at a distance. And so to grieve alone or at least in a, at a distance uh, not to have funerals in the normal way, not to be able to do the normal things that we do to comfort one another and to seek uh, God's comfort. 
uh, that it makes this normal process of grieving so much more difficult. The hopes and dreams of 2020 that we were so excited this time last year may seem like they turned into despair and a nightmare. Maybe during this past year, relationships that you thought were absolutely solid and they'd been long-lasting friendships or maybe family relationships that you've had for a long time, uh, but they've been shattered now because of differences in principles. Maybe the national election divided you from people that you thought that you knew. Maybe uh, your stand on racial equity uh, made a few people mad at you. Maybe your Christian principles that you know that you that we claim and we profess and that we uh, try to show to others in the world. Maybe our Christian principles do not align with someone else who also calls themselves a Christian, and you could not be silent about the injustices and the oppressions and the things that are done in the name of Christ. And now meaningful, deep relationships are now reduced to just a casual or cordial, short conversation, and it is heartbreaking. Maybe this past year you were shocked at a social media post of a friend or a friend of a friend or a friend of a friend of a friend, however that works, and, and then you unfriended them or unfollowed them, and the hopes of dreams of 2020 then turned into brokenness and despair and seems like a nightmare. Maybe during this past year, health and medical issues have risen to a new urgency, and many of those infected by COVID-19 will have uh, long-lasting physical problems. And the excellent medical care that we're accustomed to or receiving uh, from our healthcare professionals uh, for other health issues not related to COVID has been limited or postponed uh, because our medical professionals are working outside of their normal practice and working on the front line of this pandemic. Maybe you are that medical professional. You're the medical professional who has risked everything to save lives. And let us just stop this morning and say thank you. But maybe you've risked everything, endangering yourself and your family for strangers like the gospel calls us to do. And you've done so while watching arguments outside of the hospital over whether to wear a simple mask. But you continue to do as God has called you to do, regardless of these arguments. Maybe all this staying at home Maybe all this being excluded from one another, the normalcy of all the things that we do, the life, our lives being interrupted worldwide has affected your mental health. What we thought would just be a few months and we could do just a few months and we'd be done uh, is now about to approach a whole year and it's taken a toll on relationships and marriages. And it's taken a toll on our mental health. And it has really caused some of us to go down into a deep hole. The hopes and dreams that we had for 2020 does seem like it's turned into a despair and nightmares. Many children without question will need time to recover in their education once we get past this pandemic. Some are thriving and some are not in their remote learning or their half in school and half at home uh, kind of weeks. And, but it underscores the differences of equality in our nation. And our teacher heroes, again, we just want to say thank you to our teachers again, but they have given all that they have. They've given their all and they've done their best and they are so tired and exhausted and some parents still complain about how they do their job. Many clergy and church staff are also tired. Everything that we used to do takes three, four times longer now to do it. And without the same fruitfulness, without being able to be together with relationships in, in person. And, and our hearts are broken over the struggle of our beloved parishioners. And, you know, we 
our life purpose, the whole purpose for uh, our ministry and has been morphed into uh, these long distance visits, these long uh, Zoom calls and also the fear that someone uh, in the congregation somewhere has been uh, mistakenly forgotten. And so it's hard. And the hopes and dreams that we had for 2020 have faded into despair and nightmare. Many have not been able to pay the rent or the mortgage, and uh, your small business that you've poured your life into may be suffering and may not recover financially. Maybe there were not as many presents or food on the table uh, this Christmas. But maybe the hopes and dreams of 2020 have been, in actuality, despair and nightmares. So it is natural and it's normal for us to want to flee and be done with 2020 and just leave 2020 blowing in the wind. King Herod was bringing despair and nightmares to the people as well. And when Jesus was born, uh, the people then, or they heard from King Herod and they were afraid. And the Magi go following the stars, looking for hopes and dreams. And when the Magi came looking for the light, they saw things so much more differently than they had before. The Christ child changed their lives and changed how they viewed the world. King Herod also knew that the Christ child would bring change and would change the world. The problem is King Herod was not open to this change. At the end of this text, the Magi end up going home by another road. It may be quick to think that the Magi did so because they were afraid of Herod. And maybe so, but there's a different reason maybe because they took a different road. Because once we see the Christ child, it is surely hard to continue to go down the same old road when we see the light of Christ. When Christ touches our heart, once the light has been come into our darkness, the darkness of the old year and the light shines in the new, once we experience this holy child, we can no longer go home the same ever again. You may have heard that hindsight is twenty twenty. As we go into 2021, though, let us not ignore what God is showing us from 2020. Maybe, just maybe, God is trying to show us something new, to show us a different road. Maybe, just maybe, God is trying to give us a new way. On this Epiphany Sunday, God is revealing so much more than we can probably even understand. Maybe during 2020, in hindsight, 2020, we realize that God has created us to be communal, to be in relationship with one another. So hindsight, 2020, we realize that relationships are oh so important, more important than we ever knew. Hindsight, 2020, we realize that life continues maybe even more abundantly when we reevaluate priorities, eliminating the things that maybe are not so important or as important as we once thought they were, and we put our lives in order as God shows us to do. Hindsight 2020, maybe we have learned that taking care of ourselves physically, emotionally, uh, spiritually is something that we need to pay more attention to as we uh, go into 2021 in order to honor God. Hindsight 2020, we have had the opportunity to witness, to love, without saying a single word. Hindsight 2020, maybe God has shown us that our need for grace, that we all have a need for grace at all times, in all places, and it's something that we need to receive and something that we need to give that being more grace-filled and more kind and compassionate and more patient with one another is something that we all need. Hindsight 2020, maybe we realize that worship is conf not, not confined to just Sunday mornings in a certain mode or a certain way. 
hindsight 2020, maybe we realize that God is always with us in the good times and the not so good. And that as we enter into 2021, as we go this road, may we see and understand more this year as God leads us down a different road. So as Pastor Edward leads us at the table today, as we join our hearts together as one body, as we come to this table, may our despair and our nightmares turn into hopes and dreams as we go into this new year, knowing that the light is among us, that the Christ child leads us and is leading the way that he leads us to new possibilities, that Christ leads us to a new road, the road of peace, hope, and love. May we embrace this greatness and the Christ child this day, and may we share in his great love with one another. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you now to join me in the invitation, confession, and pardon. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. And we have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now confess in silence. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth or you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ in whom you have revealed yourself and our light and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born and in your signs and witnesses to every age and through all the world, you have led your people from far places to his light by the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection. You gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, 
broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these are my acts in Jesus Christ. We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ suffering for us, offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The body of Christ that is given for you and the blood of Christ given for you. Amen. I invite you now, wherever you may be, to partake in Holy Communion. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Take and eat and remembrance of him. So now I invite you to serve yourselves or serve those around you and share in this holy meal together. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world and the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Now may the one who was and who is and is to come guard your heart, not just today, but forevermore. May this new year be filled with love and peace and prosperity and all things that do come from God above. Happy New Year, everyone, and we love you, and may the Christ of the Christmas time shine in and through your hearts forever and ever. Amen. And let all God's children say, Amen. Go in peace.